Barn Theater in Augusta, back on the stage at the Barn Theater in uh, The Lion in Winter, Robert Newman and Kim Zimmer. You remember, right, uh, how Guiding Light ended. So you found Reba again. Yep. <laughs> did you find Joshua? Yes, ma'am, I did. And does he still want the same thing? To be with the woman I love. The woman I have loved my entire life. For the rest of my life? Yes. I want the same thing. I want you, Reba. I love you, Joshua. And if you still want to be together, then... I'm in. There it was. That was uh, the final scene of Guiding Light just a few years ago with... Robert Newman and Kim Zimmer, and they're here this morning to talk about that and the Lion in Winter at Barn Theater. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you? Great. <laughs> oh, he's bellowing already. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here with my big radio voice. Well, you know, Robert's been here so much, we're going to have to get him in office. I just told him, he said he's probably, good. he's probably bored with this place. I said, no, Robert loves to hear his own voice. Uh, <laughs> there may be another person in the room who... Would have, would have resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Welcome back to Southwest Michigan. Yes. So you hear that that final scene there, that final clip from Guiding Light. What does that stir up? Oh, lots of emotion, and it's it's funny because it's I hear that scene, and and Robert has been saying in his curtain speeches about how the the show that we're doing right now resembles Josh and Reva's relationship yeah. over time, <laughs> and that scene kind of sounds so much like our last scene together bit, yeah. at Guiding Light. <laughs> I mean, our last scene in, in Lion Lion Winter. Winter. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll be looking for that then. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, uh, and then you rode off into the sunset in this cool old truck. Really cool truck. Yeah. We both wanted to buy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not avail available to purchase. It was just a prop, huh? Yeah. 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 So uh, it's been a little time since then, and, uh, you know, you're you're okay with things now. Life has moved on, and... Yeah, I'm I'm semi-retired. Yeah, good um, for you. I really basically work in the summer. And the rest of the time, my husband and I have a house that we've rented in Taos, New Mexico for a year to see if that may be a landing spot for us. Yeah. We love the Northwest, so... Um, and we're skiers, so we're checking. We're checking out our opportunities and seeing where we're going to land. Our kids are kind of spread out all over the place. That's so. how it ends up, right? Yeah. What yeah. about you, Robert? You've been well, here a lot. I'm not but... sure I would say semi-retired, <laughs> but now I'm living the, uh, the. You know, after 28 years of knowing exactly where I was going to work as an actor next week and next month and next year, and you know, yep. now I'm living a normal actor's life, which is I just don't even know what the next gig is going to be until it <laughs> arrives. My wife said the other day. Uh, she was talking to somebody about, you know, the first question you always get when you tell people you're an actor, they're like, oh, are you working? You yeah. yeah. My wife said uh, <laughs> the default position for actors is unemployment. You're unemployed. That's yep. the default position. And mm -hmm. then you work and then you're not working and then you're working. So that's what I've been going all, all over the country doing theater everywhere. And uh, I just shot the other day uh, on my first video game. And I'm oh, not allowed cool. to talk about what the game is. It's one of the really big ones, though. And wow. I was in the, you know, the neoprene suit with the balls and the uh -huh. hammer and the whole thing. And it was wow. really fun. I really liked it. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be waiting to hear about that. <clears throat> you know, the movie Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman <laughs> yeah. is about a soap opera, right? You're and, right. And uh, they have to learn all these lines every single day. And all of a sudden, somebody spills celery tonic on the tape and they have to do it live. And George Gaines' face gets all right. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever have to do it live? No, but yeah. I would have loved it. You would have loved it. The very first yeah. soap that I did, we did it, we filmed it as if it were live. And it was in the late 70s, early 80s. And if you screwed up, yeah. they literally had to cut and paste the, the tape. Yes. So like it radio. was expensive. It was like $1,500. They would, they would threaten you and say, <laughs> every time you say, uh. oh, you know what, um, <laughs> that's going to cost us $1,500 for the edit. So you knew everybody's lines 
you we did it. We basically counted down the commercial slugs. Uh-huh. The camera would leave in the middle of the scene and go to the next set right. to get ready ready for the next shot. Oh my! And um, it was exciting. It was really exciting. And pr- that's pressure. Yeah. yeah if you, uh, I was a big. I mean, the only soap I ever watched as a kid was Dark Shadows, which yeah. sort of doesn't count because it was like vampires and, yeah. and stuff. <laughs> and uh, I talked to uh, I forget who it was. One of the actors who actually was on the show, and we talked about that. What you just described. And that was sort of the beginning of two things. One was the cameras, two cameras would peel off and, and the third camera, the, the third camera would stay. And that that was the beginning of that lingering long shot that yes. they do at the end of soap opera scenes, you know, where they so just the cameras stay would on, have so time to move. Yes. And every once in a while on Dark Shadows, if you watch returns at reruns, you'll see that the cameras are just sort of swinging around the corner and you almost catch oh. a, like half the, a piece of this the the off stage the set and then they swing into the room and then they're like oh here, we're here yeah we're back yeah. yeah and and that was the big close up for the emotional expression yeah yeah that the was egg also, shot yes <laughs> that was also in Tootsie where they kept saying about Dustin Hoffman don't get too close yeah, yeah. how about Cleveland yeah how about Cleveland <laughs> that's right we're here with Robert Newman and Kim Zimmer the show is the Lion in Winter at the Barn <laughs> Theater and uh, it's on Right now, so <laughs> sorry, we're just you, filling each other up over here. Making Have sure we're still alive. <laughs> I'm say, want me to leave you guys alone? <laughs> Not, no. So, <laughs> was Reva married to all the Lewis boys at one point? Yes, the only the only Lewis man I didn't marry was my nephew. Okay, well, <laughs> probably a good thing. Yes, my father and my brother. And, and, I was, and by the way, there's a parallel in there in in uh, Lion of Winter. Oh, also. Yes. oh just, is there? Uh, to give away too much of the plot. And okay. I was I was engaged to I was at the altar with um Kyle Sampson who whose story was he thought he was a long lost Lewis. It turns out uh, he wasn't. He was his father was a cardinal for, in the church. Uh, but <laughs> Now we're back to Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I think? I think um Josh and Reva should go to Genoa City, and there should be a love triangle between the two of you and Victor Newman. What do you and, think about and, that? And uh, Victor and what's his? Eric? Eric, Eric Braden, Braden and yeah. uh, Melody Scott. Tom, you could, you could, you I've, know. I've been married too many times, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at you. How about That's that, pretty huh? good. Yeah. Being yeah. all Eric Braden y. It's time that I marry Reva, you know. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty good. I think you should come back. That's That's lovely. Lovely. <laughs> You know, it must have been about 10 years ago. You guys were just at Lori Moore's television show. Yes. Lori and I used to work together in radio. And Kim was here at the barn. And uh, we talked to her on the air, but on the phone. And the next day, I was standing in downtown Kalamazoo. There was a big after work party. And out of the Radisson Hotel comes Kim. I was at the spa. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Right? <laughs> and so I yelled. I was Kim. at the quotation marks spa <laughs> <laughs> and so i yelled kim and you came over and we were talking and it took about 20 seconds and people in the crowd started yelling reba <laughs> and i said you better go your cover's blown yeah <laughs> i don't remember it that was, like, that was a long time I ago i felt bad i he said 10 years he's younger than i am it probably was more like 15 <laughs> <laughs> it might have been time flies right all right, so when we come back in a second, we'll talk about Lion and Winter and uh, and what this is about. In fact, uh, my colleague Tim Collins was there the other night. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he and wrote, wrote a, a little bit about it. He wrote a lovely review for us. Did. Thank he you, did. Tim. This, this story has some intrigue in it, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just... Keep your eyes and ears open. Oh, you never man. know what's going to hit you it's... alongside the head. Okay. I was saying it's, it's like my big dysfunctional family that I came that I grew up with, but with broadswords. So it's a little more. It's a little more violent. I Yikes, keep one yeah. hidden under my skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a line it's, where I say, "Of course he's got a knife. We all have knives." It's eleven eighty three, and we're still barbarians. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, it's eleven eighty three. But you know what I thought of when I was reading and listening to you talk about mm-hmm. what this relationship is between the two of you? I thought this is like Tony and Carmela Soprano or something. Yeah. There's. Uh, there's love and, and hate going yes, on. Yes, all the, the time with Definitely. these. And, and the three sons that are all, I, I say this, I don't know that you agree, they're all horrible people. <laughs> Everybody's horrible people. Yeah. But they're, yeah. so, they're impossibly they're just, smart. They're greedy and, and they're power hungry. And, and uh, the, every, the, all the characters, crazy smart, crazy funny. I mean, it's, it's just a joy. The audience brought so much to us. 
on opening night because yeah, we've they been found all the rehearsing. laughter. Yeah, and, yeah. Just, and even still, it's like you can still feel them sort of helping us to decide how to how to deliver this line or that. That's line. yeah, it's really great. I always wonder about that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did a couple little parts in high school, but that was it. When the audience reacts, it's one thing. What if they don't react the way you think you they just should? You just move through it. Yeah. Does it affect you? No, it shouldn't. You should be concentrating on what you're what you're doing instead of listening for the, <laughs> waiting for the laugh to happen. Yeah, right. death for an actor on stage is saying a line, expecting a laugh, and holding for it, and it doesn't. And happen. it doesn't. That's come. a horrible thing to have. Happen. So, what's the training then? Uh, you, you know, the audience is there, but somehow you gotta tune it out. Somehow you have to focus. It, they, you put up what 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 we always referenced in my acting classes, something called a fourth wall, okay. and that's the audience. And so you put pictures on that wall, you put a, a, a window on that wall, you put, you know, a mirror on that wall, you use it however you need to use it to put that to put that that wall up so mm-hmm. that you are unaware of the audience. Right. You, it's easy. It's at the barn, especially because the audience is so close. You can occasionally get someone will be in a bright, you know, flu- fluorescent <laughs> pink shirt and you can't help but you know see it see the shirt so i'll try to blend in when is I'm there it, Friday you night. wear your lime green yeah <laughs> lion and winter too is a really interesting example to me of of a uh, film versus uh stage i had a friend of mine say last night he's seen the film like 10 times huge uh-huh. fan loves the film and he was like you know i never thought of it as a comedy and i think when you take something like this which and it started as a broadway show and then they made it into a film right and you put it on film it, the laughs are just a whole different thing but then when you've got it in front of a live audience and they they become part of what you're doing they do they become part of your performance in a sense and it's like you're all breathing together and laughing together it's just a it's a gorgeous yeah one experience. of the one of the Glorious apprentices experience. last night was talking about they were talking about what who what composer would write, write the music for the lion in winter <laughs> if they made it a musical right. and i immediately went and Andrew Lloyd Webber. Right. He said a lot of people said Sondheim. This kid said it should be Jerry Herman because it's funny. Uh, yeah. You know, and I was like, you're right. It should be Jerry Herman. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably unexpected. I mean, when you, if you go to the website yeah. and you look at the photo, yes. you think, oh, this is, you know, yeah, yeah. serious. Yeah. Right. No, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. All it, great drama has great comedy, mm, in it, and yeah. this one does. So, um, we were talking off the air for a second. Kim was saying, you're off to another production together soon. Yeah, another small play. That's <laughs> Where the simple, couple loves each other so yes, much. It's called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf by <laughs> Edward Albee. We're off to a small theater in Nantucket to do that. We'll be running that uh, pretty much the month of September. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. It'll so, be a lot of work and it'll be a lot of fun. Is mm-hmm. this typical for you to see each other and work together this much or no no and i'm drinking heavily <laughs> because of it because it's just oh my god <laughs> no i love her with here. all my heart and soul <laughs> i don't really care <laughs> <laughs> no we've done two uh, we've been on stage in two plays since three Three. Oh, three. Yeah, that's true. We did uh, curtains but together. But who's counting? First. I am. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we did Gypsy together at Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera, uh-huh. curtains at, at uh, Paper Mill and Theater Under the Stars in, in Houston, and we did um, it uh, a Sondheim review right. called uh, Putting It Together in Delaware. So we, we see each other from time to time. And I imagine every time it brings Guiding Light fans to you mm-hmm. and yeah. what do they say what do they still oh they still about? why can't we have josh and reva back yeah and, you know i mean it's it's and they it would be fun if they if they did they were owned by the same company if they kind Perfect, of yeah. combined um as world turns and guiding light and did some kind of a movie or you know yeah. a, a, that would be interesting a mini series 26 <laughs> yeah. episodes or something yeah like that, yeah. yeah we can open with that globe still spinning that was the yeah. end of as the world turns right. the globe was spinning yeah. we, had the, uh, we had the lighthouse and you had the lighthouse that's right yeah. the globe and the lighthouse yeah. could collide <laughs> in the meanwhile we'll be completely satisfied by seeing you in the lion in winter yes. at barn theater and that's what we'll do Thank you so much for having us. Well, thank Come you. out and see us at the theater. We're in the bar show afterwards. We're we're both there. We're uh, you know, willing to sign autographs or take pictures with you. We're singing a song together. Okay, it brings mm-hmm. tears to your eyes. That's <laughs> right. And and if you haven't been to that cabaret thing afterwards, it's wonderful. It's it is fun. The at kids the barn are so theater. talented. BarnTheaterSchool.org is the website. Get your tickets there. Robert Newman and Kim Zimmer. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Talk to you again soon. I hope.